Hello, how are you today? Before I start today's video, I have a question for you. I'm wondering when you go online, watch booktubers video, have you ever felt when they say I read 50 or I read 100 books this year, does that make you feel a little stressed out? I certainly do. There's several reasons because I really want to read more books. I have a lot of to be reads on my bookshelf and also I love to buy books. I felt if you're a writer you probably have that problem too. And also my biggest struggle is I don't read fast enough. As you might already know from the video, English is not my first language and it's quite a struggle. It used to be even bigger struggle for me to reading a book in English and uh, I have been going down to the rabbit hole of figuring out how to speed read things like that. Turns out that just gave me much much more stress so I started doing research about reading. I realized that maybe this year I should practice slow reading and then today in this video I'm going to chat about why slow reading might be very beneficial for you and then maybe you should start trying it out especially when you are a writer so i'm going to do something a little bit more fun than just tell you the why's throughout the video i will also sharing you my to be reads my goal of this year is to read 12 books total in terms of slow reading on the side i might still read some other books just in case there's interesting books come out or released or somebody suggested for me but my main focus of slow reading will be set as 12 books so as long as I finish these 12 books I think I'm accomplished a pretty good year of reading and then we'll see how that goes the books I'm going to share with you in this video will be the first six books that I'm going to read the first half of the year and I'm doing this just because I want to leave a little bit of room to pick more books that's released from this year or books that recommend by other people from this year I don't want to missing out too much so I'll share with you six reasons why you should start slow reading and accompany each reason I'll share one of these books with you okay Let's start the video. The reason number one, the slow reading can help you really immerse into the story. It helps you practice your imagination. It trains your brain to wire in a way that you can visualize things. Each one of us, even we reading the same book, reading the same description, we can see things very differently. But nowadays we probably consume much more visual media instead of reading words that cause a problem everything's already imagined by other people created and the feed into your brain we kind of passively sitting there consume all the stories things we see on tv in movies and then in that sense we kind of not really utilizing our imagination as much as we should i don't know if you can remember when you were a little kid or when it's a long time ago before you even watching a lot of movie or TV did I just expose my age? I used to go to bookstore and that's where I spent all my time when I was a kid. Just the memory of being able to read a book and completely submerged into that world and then picturing everything. I think one best example is back then when Harry Potter hasn't made into film yet i have already created an entire world in my mind and it's such a fun thing to do to compare what you imagined to what's actually on the screen later when they made a film i think for our creativity sake it's very important to recognize and cultivate our own imagination because that will become something to make our vision and our voice unique in terms of being a writer or any kind of artist in general so yeah uh, slow reading can help you practice imagination so the first book on my slow reading list that i am going to share with you is this one the movie musical by Ginny Basinger um, so I found this book because I'm start writing a movie musical as you already know so I did a little bit of research find this book it's a little bit text heavy and it's a really big book for me but it also contains the entire history 
of movie musical and hopefully I can learn more about the development of movie musical and also pick out some important musicals to watch throughout the year. In that way, I can learn more about movie musical while I'm working on my own screenplay. The reason number two, slow reading can help us to understand the material in a much deeper way. What I mean by that is we can engage with the material even more. We can dive into it with our own personal experience and our own thinking. It can help us to learn how to really think, to be able to think critically. And that's very important as a writer, as a storyteller in general, because critical thinking is where we find our voice, it's where we can structure things, put our mind onto the paper to share with the world in a story form. Also, it can help us to understand ourselves better. As a storyteller, I think it's very important to understand ourselves in a more conscious way and it's not something easy it takes practice it takes years the whole life of learning about our surrounding ourselves, and then that's how we find our own voice and how we deliver what we learned to the audience to the readers yeah so i think we can't really practice thinking and practice involving ourselves into the book that we're reading by skim the book quickly or do speed reading. If we do that, we don't really have the time to think through. And then that's kind of the whole purpose of reading a book is to think. Yeah, slow reading can help you understand yourself and the thinking deeply. So the next book on my slow reading to be read list is this one. It's Set Boundaries, Find Peace. I actually already start reading this book a while ago and I didn't finish it. Uh, so I'm going to start it over. Uh, the reason I didn't finish it is because at that time I don't have the patience. The book is contains so many useful information. Every page has something that I can use to apply to my life. I find myself slow down the reading and I couldn't bear that feeling of I want to finish the book faster, faster, faster. And then at that time it just gave me a lot of stress. So I put it down. See, that's the problem of wanting to read faster. I end up putting the book down because I can't quite enjoy it because I find myself needing to read it slowly. That's why I'm including this book on my slow reading list. I really want to work on myself, work on my boundary. It's very important for me to learn to balance my personal life, my filmmaking career, my YouTube, as well as my day job, I need to draw a line there uh, in order to learn how to not stress out. And then, you know, stress is the enemy of creativity. So this book is very important for me. And then also this book comes with a workbook. It's actually highly recommended by a lot of people. Um, so I'm going to also take my time working on the workbook as well to journal a little bit, to reflect my thoughts onto the page. Hopefully it can help me in some way. Okay, so reason number three you should start slow reading is it can help you practice attention span. I think this is probably one of the most important thing we should learn to practice in today's world because all the social media, all the influence that we're getting around us everything just telling us more information faster and we're getting too much stuff fading into our mind every single day. I think that's one of the biggest challenge for any storyteller, for writers. I don't know if you have this kind of experience, but it's so much harder for you to sit, type, write for an extensive period of time now than before. I think I'm referring my childhood because when I was like a teenager, I can journal for like three hours straight, writing down everything happened in my life. If you have a struggle with uh, procrastination, if you feel that you can't really work for an extensive period of time, if you can't read for an extensive period of time, there's a high chance that it's just about the attention span and it's not really your fault. 
It's the society designed to train our mind to consume more stuff in a faster pace, so they can sell us more stuff. They can grab our attention. I think the most important ability in today's world is to be able to expand your attention for extensive period of time, because that's where our creativity coming from, and that's what make you stand out. So the next book I'm going to share with you is the story of philosophy by Will Durant. So I stumbled across this book、uh, from Leaf by Leaf's YouTube channel. I'm going to keep a link down below so you can check his channel out. I love his channel because he reads a lot of very interesting books, and at the same time he share. What's actually really inspire him? He will read with you, and in general, his channel is quite slow paced, and a lot of time I put it in the background, and it's really calming and inspiring. So I chose this book because this is one of the recommendation that I got. Apparently, it covered Western philosophy history in a very Interesting way that a lot of people loved reading this book back then when it's just released. Hopefully, it can make the reading easier. I really want to get into reading philosophy a little bit more.、Um, I'm very interested into philosophy, but I don't read as many books that as I should. So I think this book would be a good introduction for Western philosophy for me.、Um, we'll see. I'll let you know if I like this book and. Number four, as a storyteller, reading slowly can help you learn the writing style. I don't mean to copy the writer's writing style, but you can actually go in there to analyze what make the style works, what kind of choice they made, what information they withheld in order to approach. What purpose or what kind of information they gave in order to evoke what kind of emotion? Those are the things that are very important for us to learn and understand more as a storyteller. No matter you are a writer,、um, fiction writer, or you are a screenwriter, it's very important to learn the aspect of storytelling. And、uh, I think we can't really learn those kind of thing. By skimming through a book, because you're going to skip very important sentences that might not contain much information on the surface, but actually quite interesting and important, and maybe a brilliant choice. And you definitely don't want to missing out those things. So the fourth book on my slow reading list I'm going to share with you is this one, on writing. I don't know if you can see clearly, but it's on writing from. Hemingway. I mean, we all know how he provoke emotions from his readers. I'm very interested to learn how he writes, what's his writing process, and、uh, what his advice to writers. I think this book will help me improve my understanding of writing and understanding of creativity a little bit more. And reason number five: slow reading can help you relieve some stress. It's very ironic of me that. I tend to be very busy, and I schedule an hour each day for reading. And the last year, I was trying so hard to read faster, read more, and then turns out the one hour of reading time become also a source of stress for me outside of my day job, outside of my filmmaking career. It turns out become more like a chore instead of something I lay back, relax for. But every time, if I have the moment to take my time reading on my own pace, I find that the reading process is quite. Enjoyable. It's more relaxing for me. More of something can help me escape from all the stress that I have. Something kind of help me balancing out my life a little bit. So why not make this experience fun and enjoyable? Sit down, make a hot cup of coffee or tea, even in the evening for some chamomile tea that can help you sleep. Wind down from a busy day by slow reading a book, not thinking about have you met the page count today yet, but really immerse yourself into those words. I bet you the experience will be very different, and then it really can help you relax 
and relieve some stress. The fifth book that I'm going to share with you on my slow read list is this one, Freedom from the Known by Krishna Murti. I hope I said his name right. Um, I couldn't quite find how to really pronounce his name online. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong and please let me know how to accurately pronounce his name. I'm actually kind of a little bit cheating here. I actually choose two of his books. The other one would be as one is. The reason I'm doing this because you can see the book is very small. It's just a little bit over a hundred page. So I think I'm just go ahead going to read both book as one. So I have been watching some of his talk lectures that people posting online from a long, long time ago. I love how he apply religion and the philosophy into our life and he can put words in such a beautiful and a calming way. Um, so I hope these two books can be something help me understand myself more be more aware of myself and also slow down a little bit more. Yeah, I'm very looking forward to this two book. Number six, last but not least, and this is a very contradicting one, is slow reading can actually help you read more. I personally start experimenting this a little bit because when we think reading is more like a task, it's not as enjoyable like what I mentioned earlier. But when I really engage with the reading, I find myself pick up the book more often. I've been reading outside of time that I schedule for reading. Reading becomes something much more active. I'm more involved myself into it. My thoughts are in the book, with the book. Even when I set the book down, I'm thinking about the book. So that caused me more likely to pick up the book. Yes, of course, it might spend more time to read. And then that's the whole purpose. Reading more doesn't mean read more books, but spend more time reading versus more time on your phone, more time on things that's meaningless. Even though I do spend much more hours each week to read, but I finish more books somehow and I think that is the contribution of a slow reading. So the last book on my slow reading list is this one. It's The Adult Children of Emotional Immature Parents by Lindsay Gibson. So I stumbled across this book many times. It's a book recommended by a lot of people, a lot of therapies recommending this book. It's a book Again, helping us to build awareness about ourselves, about our own insecurity that coming from our childhood. It's not blaming on parents, but come on, everybody have some issues needs to deal with. So it's about how personally you are able to recognize the pattern that you have within your family and how to stop that from you and also help you recognize the pattern that people have around you, with you, and how to set a healthy boundary to break that toxic pattern. I think it's very important. I constantly like to read books like that to understand myself more. Psychology is probably the book I read the most. Um, I just really enjoy to learn more about myself, about people around me, and honestly, for years of reading those psychology books, I do feel more at ease and uh, much better at the deal with my anxiety. I have really, really bad anxiety and uh, I'm in a much better place to deal with it now. It doesn't mean I don't have it anymore. It's just much easier for me to recognize and uh, apply something I learned to it so it doesn't have as a strong impact on me. Yeah, so those are the reasons I think you should start slow reading practice and uh, I'm very excited to do this and I'll share with you more about how it goes and maybe check in with you again in July. So if you are interested, remember to subscribe. As you might already noticed, all the books that I pick are nonfiction books. That's because I know, I know it's definitely gonna happen that in next six months, there will be people recommending fictions that I want to read. And uh, in that way, I can kind of 
adding those fictional books into my reading list but not for slow reading um, because a lot of time I reading fictional depends on the book have a different kind of pace um, sometimes for example the one I just finished I didn't really enjoy the description as much I found it's a little bit repetitive so I start skimming through descriptions to pick up the pace a little bit but slow down when there's the things that I feel much more interesting but I'm not going to slow read the entire book I hope that makes sense so in this way I can balance out non-fiction and fiction a little bit hopefully I can read certain amount of both I forgot to mention I'm sitting right here at my book nook this is a whole bookshelf set up up there and if you're interested in see how I build this cozy bookshelf and book nook in uh, you can click right here check out this video that I made a while ago and thank you so much for watching be patient be present stay creative I'll see you next video bye see you.